What is? I'm gonna put this closer to you so yeah. I can hear you. I don't care about my things. Okay, so what is your current assignment? So grades and subjects. First grade classroom teacher. Right, All yeah. subjects. <laughs> <laughs> um, approximate number of students in the school. Like 350? 350? Approximately. You're right. <laughs> um, approximate number of licensed staff in the school. Mm. See, we lot like we had a lot of changes. Like last year there were about like 60. What was it even more? No. Well, I don't know if they're all licensed. Yeah, that's true. There's 60 together. Let's see. <laughs> right, I know. Four, five, six, seven. 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, probably about 40, 30, 30 to 40, no. somewhere in there. No, probably like 40, because like 20 classroom teachers, and this is a great interview. <laughs> right. Because <laughs> you're know, listening to all my answers. answers. Yeah. All right, what technologies are found in your room? So we have 10 iPads that the students use. Uh, we have a smart board. Teacher computer, CD player. I think that's it. Um, what other technologies are available to be used in the classroom? Um, we have a cart of iPads. So if you want everybody in the classroom to use it, there's some smaller carts. So if you need more than your 10, you can check out those carts of iPads. And then there's Chromebook carts as well. But Chromebooks are used primarily in the upper grades. And then what arrangements do you have to make to get those? There's a sign out calendar. So pretty straightforward and easy. Oh, there's also iPods. And computer labs. Well, the computer lab you can't bring to the classroom. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Um, does the school media center or the district have DVDs or streaming videos available? Um, so we've, with our MacBooks, we have less, we don't have a DVD drive on them anymore, but we can check out a DVD drive if we want to. Um, we do have a subscription to like, Discovery Education, and that has a lot of videos that are educational. And there's other, you know, websites and programs we have subscriptions to that have some videos on them, but. Mm -hmm. And then how do you use them if you do? Um, I guess our, on our science curriculum has some videos that go with it and that's all available online. So I've used those and I've used, um, like our Scholastic News subscription has some videos, like short little videos that go with the the readers. Oh, and then our our math and literacy curriculums. <laughs> You've obviously seen the math. There's little little intro videos with both of those curriculums too that I'll use. So they're only like a minute or two long and mm. they're good to just show a little snapshot of what we're learning. Does the school have a library media specialist? Yes. Um, what kind of support is available from the school's library media center for teachers, resources, and instruction? Sarah will pretty much help you in any way <coughs> you might need. Um, we do have a teacher resource library, so of like, instructional books, or if you're looking to learn more about like, guided reading or math strategies or you know any kind of strategies. So that's available and very organized to find what you might need. Um, then there's guided reading books we can check out. Obviously, the whole library is available if you know you want to check out a read aloud book or a, a nonfiction text that might be helpful to what you're learning about. Um, and then she also provides all the technology support. So any problems with our MacBooks or iPads or smart boards, she'll assist with that as well. Uh, how many computer labs are in the school? We have two computer labs. C 
Sarah also helps with those two, you know, arranging um, to get, you know, computer set up and she'll help do lessons if we want, you know, on a certain mm -hmm. um, technology topic too. Um, about how many students can each lab accommodate? 30. That could be what the yeah. Yeah, I think there's at least 30 computers. I was going to say, there's quite a few left in yeah. there for testing. So. Yeah. Oh, and then there also is um, resource, like other technology resources. This goes back to the library question, but what's available there? We have like robots and different like mm -hmm. Osmo kits and different games too that you can check out to teach coding or robotics or um, different concepts in a different way as well. So then I already know that you have um, iPads in the classroom. Um, you have 10 iPads. And so how do you use them as a teacher? <laughs> um, so I have specific learning apps set up for each iPad that are very intentional in terms of what instruction is happening with them. So um, the students rotate you know, every week they make sure they get the different games and apps um, to learn what skills we're working on. So the Osmo games um, practice number sense during math time. And then Moby Max practices math skills that are at their level. They take a placement exam for that and get activities at their level. And there's also number sense and fact fluency games on there as well that with each game they take a or which each platform they take a placement exam, so they're getting at their level instruction and or experience exposure. And then during reading time, we have the Osmo Letters, which practices word um, word work skills. And then um, Roz Kids, which is reading books, um, where the the app will read the story to them once, and these are all at their level, and then they read it and then answer comprehension questions. Um, does the teacher use any flipped learning strategies, such as screen recordings of a lesson or new concepts? Well, <laughs> I have these word work activities with um, uh, sight words. So there's a recorded lesson the students listen to and follow along and do a... It's sort of flipped classroom. It's not completely because they're doing an activity while they're listening to it, but it is instructional activity. And at first grade level, we don't really do lectures right. <laughs> like a typical flipped classroom, you know, would be listening to a lecture and then applying it in the classroom. So they're applying it at the same time as they're listening to the lesson. Right. Um, so how do you allow your students to access those lessons? It happens in the classroom instead of outside of the classroom because a lot of our families do not have access to technology or knowledge of how to utilize it in such a way to do like the, the, the typical foot classroom or you know the right. What educational software or websites do you use? Um, well, I already talked about a lot of the apps that mm -hmm. we use. And we also use those programs in the computer lab. Um, we'll go and also do coding online. We haven't started that, but that's another website, code.org, that we use. Mm -hmm. yep. um, and then there'll be more that we introduce throughout the year. But right now, I spoke on what we used already. <laughs> um, which computer platform are used most in the school? So like Windows and Mac? Uh, Windows in the student classrooms. Macs are the teacher. And then the iPads are Mac, or well, Apple. And then the Chromebook carts are Chromebook. I mean, <laughs> that's its own type of thing. Yeah. So we have a mix of a lot of, <laughs> pretty much all of the. Um, what's your favorite 
What sort of plans does the school or district have that the teacher knows about concerning technology in the future? What type of plans? Yeah, like do you have plans to like get in something new, like something? I mean, the big thing was getting all the teachers' MacBooks, and that's been rolling out the last couple of years. So, Discovery got them last year. Some schools have started this year, um, and then I mean. I think that's pretty much. Yeah, getting everyone. It, you know, I mean, they have one to one iPads and MacBooks in the junior high and um, high school level. And then the elementary is more up to the building to decide. So, mm -hmm. like, you'll see differing levels of like iPads in the classroom or Chromebooks in the classroom, depending which elementary school right. you visit because it's up to the building to decide how to allocate funds for technology. Right. So ours, we are fortunate that we do have the 10 iPads in the classroom, mm -hmm. um, while other schools do not have yeah, that. Yeah, I think I've heard, I don't know which school it was, someone was in one and they only had one iPad mm -hmm. for all the kids. Yeah, that's typical. Well, I, like I was at a different school in the district mm -hmm. prior to being here, and yeah, we had one iPad and one Chromebook in the classroom but we could check out you know mm -hmm. the carts and right. things and they had more carts than we do but that makes sense but not not enough to <laughs> right to even out. not it didn't even it didn't equal out but it's just a choice of spending those funds in different ways right um does your district provide classes or in-service training on the technology that you have yeah, we've had a lot of professional development on technology, especially as we rolled out MacBooks, and our media specialist also does how-to videos and different ways of, and then she'll sit down one-on-one -on -one if you have further questions. So it's sort of differentiated depending on the person because some people have more exposure and don't need to, you know, sit through a whole PD about it, but other people need more, so. Um, what is the first item on your teacher's wish list for your own classroom? <laughs> oh, that list is always long. <laughs> currently? Currently, I told myself no more wishes. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'd love to have more iPads. Mm -hmm. Um, I mean, I love that we have 10 and that's great, but I can think of ways, like if I did have a one-to-one -one classroom where every student did have access to an iPad where I could do more, um, there's great apps where you can, you know, sort of, um, check in on progress for like when they're out doing individual work versus doing a worksheet where there's less accountability when you're sitting with a group at the same time, right. where there's apps where you could do the worksheet on an app and then you can see how their progress is being made or you know if they have questions they can click a button and I could still help them while I'm working with another group yeah. so that would be a, a far off their wish <laughs> <laughs> all right so that'll do it for the first part okay <laughs>